Victoria and Jonathan's relationship began perfectly on their first date. Jonathan instantly knew Victoria was the one and said, I have waited for you for a thousand years and here you are. Something about his words made Victoria feel safe. Little did she know he was a real devil and she should have run away without looking back. In a few years, this man would do something terrible and cold-hearted to Victoria and her child, but the ugly truth would come out on the day of the funeral. Victoria had nearly everything one could wish for, successful businesses, a garage full of cars, and a mansion. She had inherited her late parents' fortune, and her intelligence and dedication quickly propelled her to the top. After several years of hard work, she became one of the most influential and successful women in the city. Known for her philanthropy, Victoria won many awards for her acts of kindness and was always ready to help the sick and poor. At 27, she started the Victoria Richardson Foundation, which has given many homeless kids a better life. She also extended her kindness to animals, helping many shelters and animal rescue foundations provide better lives for animals. Definitely, such a wonderful woman deserves to be happy, right? Well, sadly, that wasn't the case. Victoria was as sad as a black stone under the blue sea. You see, Victoria was a victim of her past. While in her teens, she dated a guy named Thomas, and that relationship lasted five years. It was beautiful yet very dark and toxic. Thomas eventually lost his life in an accident while drinking and driving and Victoria blamed herself for it. That day, she had scolded him about his drinking habits and it escalated into an intense argument. He left the house in anger, got into this car, and zoomed off. You're driving me crazy. I'm tired of the fights. I want peace. This is toxic. Just leave and don't come back. Victoria had screamed at him as he rushed out of the house that evening. Their relationship had become so toxic that she felt she couldn't go on anymore. Sadly, Thomas's death only made her realize how much she still loved him and that she still had some strength left in her to try. Ever since then, she had been looking for Thomas in every man she met. Unfortunately, after a week or two, she would fall out of love with them. Maybe it wasn't love to start with, but the feelings would just disappear. Over the years, Victoria started thinking that maybe she would never love anyone as much as she had loved Thomas. That was the case until she met Jonathan. A young man in his late twenties, Jonathan sent her a Facebook request one night. Seeing him in those crazy jeans and a black hoodie reminded Victoria of Thomas. The guy also had a little girl sitting beside him in his profile picture. She was about five years old, and judging from the way she looked like Thomas, Victoria knew the girl was his daughter. Scrolling through his Facebook posts, Victoria saw how much he cared for his daughter Anna, and she immediately felt drawn to the girl. For the next few days, Victoria found herself stuck on his profile. She wanted to know more about him and his daughter. Some days later, just when Victoria was about to text him, she got a message from him. Hi, gorgeous. Wasting no seconds, Victoria responded, and they chatted for hours. Victoria even spoke to little Anna on the phone. It was beautiful it felt like a dream come true. Over the next few days, they continued talking on the phone, and Victoria couldn't believe how hard she had fallen for a guy she met online who was younger than her. After texting for a few weeks, the duo finally met in person, and it was beyond perfect. Jonathan brought Anna along, and they all had a great time. When they were about to leave, Jonathan held Victoria's hands and told her that he really liked her and that maybe he could finally get over his dead girlfriend, Anna's mother, and move on with her. Within a few months, Jonathan moved in with Victoria, and everyone could tell that there was something different about her. She looked happy, and she was even more productive. Gradually, Victoria became convinced that she would never fall out of love with Jonathan and swore to do everything to keep their relationship. So when Jonathan started asking for money, she agreed right away and saw nothing wrong with it. She even gave him double whatever he asked for without questioning him about the money's use. Or maybe she was just scared to ask. It was only when Jonathan started to get angry whenever she helped the needy that Victoria began to suspect something wasn't right. Why do you keep acting like Mother Teresa? We could use that money to start a business, invest in real estate. He would scream at her. Six months into the relationship, Victoria's business started to go bad 
and even though Victoria tried to explain that it could sometimes happen that way and that she would recover from her loss, Jonathan wasn't having any of it. It's because you keep helping people with the money. We will go bankrupt all because of you, he yelled. He demanded access to her bank account and businesses so he could control what she sent to people, and to Victoria's surprise, she complied. Not long after this, Victoria started doubting if she should be letting Jonathan control her that much. But it was during this point that she discovered she was pregnant, and she found herself depending on him and loving him even more. Now preoccupied with managing the businesses, Jonathan was often away from home, and Victoria began to suspect that he was using work as an excuse to stay away from her. Regardless of this, she was glad that she had little Anna by her side. You'll have a younger brother or sister soon, okay? Victoria would tell Anna, and the little girl would rub Victoria's bump. The two had come to love each other so much and couldn't imagine their lives without each other. As the months passed, Jonathan closed down Victoria's foundation, but she still secretly tried to help a few people. Soon enough, Victoria began to wonder if the relationship was heading in the right direction, but whenever she had doubts, Jonathan would do something to make her forget about her worries and fears. It was on one of these days when she got angry at him for trying to stop her from helping her cousin that he suddenly went down on one knee and proposed. Victoria couldn't believe her eyes. She felt they still needed more time to study each other, but then again, she couldn't imagine her life without him. So why wait? Yes, she had doubts, but she also loved Jonathan so much. And then there was little Anna standing in front of her and screaming, say yes to dad. So Victoria found herself saying yes quietly at first, then she started screaming happily. The wedding was a far cry from what Victoria had always envisaged. There were only a few friends in attendance, as Jonathan wanted, but still, Victoria was happy. Maybe just not as happy as she should have been. At least she loved the groom, and seeing Anna, her little bride, dressed in white made her happy. After the marriage, Jonathan became more and more absent from home, so when Victoria's water eventually broke, he wasn't at home. Anna was the one holding her hands and telling her everything would be all right. The little girl called 911, and within a few minutes, an ambulance arrived, and Victoria was rushed to the hospital where she gave birth to a baby girl named Ava. It was exactly two years after Ava's birth that tragedy struck. After eating supper prepared by Jonathan, the family went to bed. Sadly, the next morning, Jonathan and his daughter Anna were the only ones who woke up. Jonathan quickly called Victoria's relatives and asked them to come over immediately. When the relatives arrived, they found a letter on Victoria's bed, and it read, I'm so sorry that I disappointed you all. Life became so difficult, and I couldn't go on. Taking my daughter along is the best decision I made, and I hope you don't judge me for it. I want our souls to rest peacefully, so please bury us right away. Words would fail to describe how they all felt. Regardless, they quickly organized a burial as Victoria had requested. But just when the coffins were open to be viewed one last time, something unbelievable happened. Anna, who was standing beside Victoria's coffin, suddenly stopped crying and screamed, everyone wait. There was total silence. Then Anna screamed again, her finger just moved. She's alive. One family member who happened to be a nurse rushed to Victoria and her daughter. She held their wrists and felt a weak pulse, and then she screamed, they are alive, they are alive. Within a few minutes, they were rushed to the hospital where they received proper treatment. Victoria was so shocked when she saw the letter that her family claimed was written by her. She immediately knew Jonathan was responsible for everything. Seeing that his secret was out, Jonathan fled the city. But after a thorough search by the police, they found him, and he was put behind bars. After making a full recovery, Victoria and her daughter were eventually discharged. A few months later, Victoria, who finally found the strength to put her past behind her, legally adopted Anna, and they all lived happily ever after. I'm really keen to know your thoughts, so please don't hesitate to share your insights in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it engaging, I invite you to subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Feel free to share this video with your friends and family to spread the enjoyment. Take good care of yourselves, and I'm excited to connect with you in our future videos.